Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Jan and I'm back with some more vibes for you. Yes, I. And uh, one of my subscribers, well, I think it's somebody that watched my video. I'm not so sure if it's a subscriber or not, but someone suggested that I watch Geography Now, the Netherlands. And I might like to find out more about the, the Netherlands and things. So, you know, we going to get into this and watch it. And by the way, man, thank you all for subscribing. Those of you who just subscribed, you know what I mean? Keep watching them videos. I'm going to keep pumping them out because I really enjoy doing this. Like, right now it's a Saturday night and I'm chilling watching some videos. You understand what I'm saying? Thing. But, you know, thanks for subscribing. Keep the comments going. And please, please keep the suggestions coming and I'll keep watching them because I want to learn and I enjoy watching these videos and I enjoy having you guys watch it with me you know so without talking too much let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer hey guys so this is gonna be a little awkward why because two years ago my Dutch friend Vincent who used to do the animations before I regrettably hired Ken wait what? He came and visited here in LA, long story short, I promised him he could be in the Netherlands episode, so we pre-shot some footage, and this was the intro we made. I flew over, this guy, a real Dutchman, say hi to Vincent, right here. Hey Vincent, hey. Vincent, I know the Dutch are tall, but just step down from the box, okay? Just step down. You get off the your box now. <laughs> Being tall, I think that was now, funny. There are many countries that deal with water issues. Some lack water, some have too much water, and some, like the Netherlands, have bridled the wild stallion and have learned how to control the water and use it to their advantage. Water is probably the most powerful element in the Netherlands, and without it, they would be, I don't know, pretty useless. So, what do you say, 2016 Vincent? And then, politieke geet dat weer. So, yeah, that was I'm calling this place Holland. That's just one part of the country. National tourism website is called Holland.com. You're not helping us here, Dutchies. Oh, and hey, there's a town called The Hulk. First of all, the country is located in northwestern Europe along the North Sea, bordered by Germany and Belgium. The country is divided into 12 provinces. Here's 2016 Vincent naming all of them for you. They are Limburg, North Holland, Zeeland, South Holland, Utrecht, Gelderland, Overijssel, Drenthe, Groningen, Friesland, North Holland, and the newest province, Flevoland. Almost all of Flevoland was reclaimed from the Zuiderzee in the 1950s. So, besides being famous for making cheese and clogs, we also make our own land. The country kind of has two capitals, Amsterdam, the largest city and economic hub of the country, and home to the royal palace. And just to skip over, the third largest city, The Hague, acts as the second capital, which holds the seat of government, as well as the International Court of Justice. The second largest city, though, would be Rotterdam, which holds the busiest seaport in all of Europe. The busiest airport, though, is, of course, Amsterdam's Schiphol International, Europe's third busiest airport, carrying nearly 70 million passengers annually. Now we've reached the overseas territories. Apart from the mainland European part, the country actually holds sovereign over six other island entities in the Caribbean, remnants of the colonial past. These are collectively called the Dutch Caribbean. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Technically, the Netherlands is a country made up of four countries, the mainland Netherlands, as well as three other constituent countries, kind of like what Wales and Scotland are to the UK. They are Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, which is actually half of an island shared with the French overseas territory of the... Aruba is really nice, man. Uh, no, St. Martin and Curaçao, they're nice, but are you Aruba? I actually had a cousin that used to live there. Nice little beaches and stuff, nice little culture going because you know you have that Dutch type of vibe going on there instead of the British or the Spanish. It's a nice little island and thing. St. Martin. Oh, so it's both French and Dutch. Hmm. That's kind of cool. That's, that's a nice blend of culture right there same name but in French. This means that this one island is the only area which the Netherlands technically borders France. These guys hold a high level of autonomy, they can have their own constitutions and currency. Otherwise the remaining three islands are Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Little Saba, which by the way has the shortest airport runway in the world. These three fall under the title of special municipalities and do not belong to any province. They are directly controlled by the Dutch government. However, in 2011 they decided to switch currencies and adopt the US dollar. All these islands lie in the subregion known as the Lesser Antilles. Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire are usually referred to as the AV 
BC islands, lying in the subregion of the Leeward Antilles, whereas St. Eustatius, Saba, and St. Martin, usually called the SSS islands, are located in the subregion of the Leeward Islands. Keep in mind, at one point, all six yeah, of these in the Windward Islands. Antilles and operated collectively as a single constituent country, with the capital at Willemstad and Curaçao. They even competed separately in the Olympics. With the exception of Aruba, who had autonomy in 1986, it wasn't until the early 2000s when they all voted for their future, and it kind of went like this. Okay, guys, you have four options for your future. Choose wisely. You can have closer ties to us, remain just as you are in the Netherlands Antilles, autonomy as a constituent country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or you can opt for complete independence as a new nation and break away from us. We vote for autonomy as constituent countries. Me too. What the? We want closer ties and we'll settle for special municipality status. Really, Bonaire? You're one of us, the ABC Island. You're really gonna ditch us like that and leave us with this half Frenchy magoo? Yep, deal with it. And that's basically how it went down. So there you go. That's how you make a Netherlands. Waterways dominate the country, though. There's even a town with no roads and only canals. You know, but how did it end up this way? Somewhere around the 9th century. I've seen that this one picture here. Let's see here. End up this way. Somewhere around the 9th century, people were kind of fed up with all the fleas. Let's go back a bit, you know what I mean? We Frenchie Magoo? Yep, deal with it. And that's basically how it went down. So there you go. That's how you make a Netherlands. Waterways dominate the country, though. There's even a town with that, no road. I see this on Facebook all the time, and I always... Well, I kind of I knew where it was, but oh man, look at look at that. No one want to live in the, there, you know, right next to there. Your house is there. You're in the backyard and stuff. I guess it would be sort of cumbersome having little kids. You have to watch them all the time, jump in that water. But you know, look at that. That looks so peaceful. I love it. I love it and only canals. But how did it end up this way? Somewhere around the 9th century, people were kind of fed up with all the flooding, and they invented these seawalls known as dikes, which surrounded polders or reclaimed land plots protected by the dikes. To this day, the Netherlands has reclaimed about a fifth of its total landmass from the sea. So what would happen if all the dikes were destroyed and all the water just came and flooded everywhere? Scientists speculate that the country would go from looking like this to this. Whoa, Amsterdam would be caught. Yep. Luckily, the Dutch are fantastic engineers and have been taming this dragon for centuries. And speaking of engineering, there are so many notable spots to check out in case you ever visit. So many museums. But the most notable one probably being the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, the Royal Palace, the Van Gogh Museum, the Anne Frank House, numerous castles like these, numerous star-shaped fortress towns, so many amusement parks like these, the enclaves and exclaves of Beryl Nassau. We talked about this in the Belgium episode. The world's largest flower garden at Kuchenhof. Oh, I'd like Herman, to see that. prehistoric burial site. And of course, there are somewhere around 1,000 historic windmills left in the country from the 1800s, mostly in the Kinderdijk area, a UNESCO heritage site. Keep in mind, though, the country has a ton of modern wind turbines that help supply energy to the nation, a topic that will be discussed in... Greek philosopher Pythias visited in the 3rd century BC, and he said about this place, more people have died in the struggle against water than in the struggle against men. The Netherlands is really unlike any other country in Europe because in order for them to even have physical land, a lot of work has to go into it. For one, the country is the lowest country in Europe, elevation-wise. Over a quarter of the land and a fifth of the population lies below sea level, and about half of the land lies less than a meter above sea level. The lowest point actually being here at Soyplas Polder, and the highest point of the mainland European part of the country, at a small hill called Palsberg, just over a thousand feet, or 322 meters high. However, in wow. the entire kingdom of the Netherlands, the highest point would actually be Mount Scenery, a potentially active volcano on the island of Saba in the Caribbean. Back to mainland Europe, though. Within this complex system of waterways and canals, the famous Rhine River that goes through all of Europe and the longest in the country actually ends in Rotterdam. The largest body of water would be Lake or Bay Yelsemir, contained within the N302 and E22 highways. In order to manage all the flooding in the south, though, the Netherlands has undergone one of the largest engineering projects in modern history. The Delta Works is a series of massive elevated levees that close off sea estuaries, preventing flooding. They even have backup levees in case one down the line bursts. In the north, though, the Walden Islands act as kind of like natural barriers against the sea. All all this land reclamation has left many of the inland areas exposed to what are labeled as the largest open sand drifts in Europe. Keep in mind that they are not wow. deserts, but rather strange, wet, sandy plots in the middle of green shrubbery. A rare natural sight to come across anywhere in the world. So, in a nutshell, the entire country is basically one big river delta. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. Whew. So that's just about it for now. I gotta get my triple shot of espresso break, which means we need a guy who 
Noah's a few things. <laughs> Besides all the water chaos, Netherlands is quite a powerful nation considering its size. They rank in the top 20 largest world economies, usually around 17th nice. or 16th place, and they rank somewhere in the top 5 to 10 largest exporters on Earth. In fact, they have the oldest stock exchange in the world, dating back to 1602. Didn't that lead to, like, the whole Tula mania thing, where people sold a single bowl for the price of, like, an entire ship? That was not the stock market, that was just a socioeconomic phenomenon and at its height sold for 10 times the annual wage with skilled craftsmen. Anyway, today, although they produce about 80% of the world's tulips and over half of the world's cut flower exports, their economy is mostly driven by the service and energy sectors. After the discovery of a natural gas field in 1959, the Dutch became a fuel powerhouse. The Shell Company became the largest and most internationally recognized Dutch company in the world. Besides the petroleum industry, though, the Dutch are well known for their electronics and tech innovation. The company Philips invented the audio tape, which helped pioneer other formats like videotapes, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Yeah, the company was Dutch, but keep in mind it was invented in Hassel, Belgium. Oh, Belgium. We love you, bud. Don't try to f***ing take this from us. Otherwise, the Dutch have made great strides <laughs> towards environmental protection. It's not uncommon to find animal crossing bridges to allow wildlife to cross over highways. Over 70 mammal species exist here, such as hares, hedgehogs, stoats, and deer. In addition, according to their government website... Some places don't even have bridges for humans to go across. ...fruit, flower, meat, and dairy products. Speaking of which, the modern orange-colored carrot was originally bred orange here in the Netherlands, specifically honor the king. Since then, orange carrots are now kind of an international staple. And speaking of which, boom! Some top notable dishes you guys, Dutch geography, suggested we mentioned include things like various types of stampons, Dutch pancakes with powdered sugar, apple tarts, bitter ballin', split pea soup, rookworts, stroop waffles, so many potato dishes, brined herring and smoked eel. Gin was invented here, sorry Brits. For breakfast, chocolate sprinkles on toast is common. And the pride and joy of the nation, how to cheese. Yep. That's how you pronounce it, guys. Oh, and keep in mind, they used to be the largest beer exporters in the world, Heineken being their top brand until Mexico beat them in 2010. Oh, wow. Cool. It's also important to note that you will probably find lots of Indonesian and Suriname dishes like satay or salted cod buns. A little cultural cue that hints towards the colonial past, which brings us to... Thank you, Noel. Follow him on Instagram. You know, you can say to whatever extent that may mean to any country, you know? That's good to know. English official country in the world. Somewhere around nine out of ten Dutch people claim they can comfortably speak English, and around ninety-four percent of the country is in some way bilingual. Geography Anna told me a joke. Many times Dutch kids will ask their parents, Hey mom. Yes, honey. Why do we have to learn English? But the British don't have to learn Dutch. Because our ancestors decided it would be a great idea to trade New York for Suriname and one small island in the it's important to note, though, that there are two other regional languages accepted in Dutch society. They are Frisian, spoken in the northern Friesland region, and the other being Papimiento, a Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. But it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people on average in the world, men averaging around 6 foot 1 and women around 5 foot 7. And once again, here's 2016 Vincent explaining. Latest studies have shown that natural selection has been the biggest reason. Being tall equals being more athletic, successful, and healthy. Many educated men start families after their studies. Fast forward a couple of years, with length being very heritable, and the result is a nation of giants. Yeah, we're out greeting short people. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Most Protestants, but today about half the population identifies as unaffiliated, which, depending on who you ask, could be anything from the largest unaffiliated group, Gnostics, about the growing number of Eatists at around 28%, which is kind of like a technical term for spiritual but not religious. Otherwise, Islam at about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian. <laughs> we are breeding short people. Why does that seem so funny to me?
That's a giant. That just seems so funny to me, huh? That's a line I gotta use to a short person who get mouthy with me. Soon we shall outbreed you short people. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that, that was a good one. That was a good one. I'm gonna have to use that one. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Religious. Otherwise, Islam at about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian communities. Christianity, although not practiced regularly by most of the people, still plays a heavy cultural role in the Netherlands. Holidays like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and Ascension are still celebrated by everyone in a Dutch manner. At one point, there were a vast empire that spanned across every inhabited continent. Maybe I might look into a Dutch Christmas since it's a Christmas New Zealand, season. named after the Zealand province. Tasmania, named after this Dutch guy. New York was once called New Amsterdam, and so on. Otherwise, what is the Dutch? way of doing things. Many of you guys, the Dutch geographers, have told me there's a Dutch saying, act normal, which is ironic considering that they are almost anything but normal. And here's random Hannah to explain culture stuff. Historically, the Dutch have always kind of had a counter-traditional mindset that shaped the way they developed as a nation. For one, they are one of the few remaining monarchies left in the world, technically a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy that limits the royal powers. And the people generally like their king. He even has a holiday to himself, and the entire country wears the national color of orange. Of course, the country is known for being a frontliner in passing what many in the world see as controversial laws. They were the first country to legalize same-sex marriage, they have regulated legal prostitution, euthanasia, and they have a policy of tolerance toward recreational soft drugs like marijuana. People 18 years old... Hmm. No, they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm not that big of a smoker, to tell you the truth. But that's interesting. Well, mm, let me take that back. I'm not much of a big smoker here. Because back on the island, I used to grow my own stuff in my backyard. It ain't legal. But I used to, I used to you know, have a little tree in my backyard, you know. Hey, you gotta buy the stuff and you don't know what they're putting in it to take, you know what I mean? So I, man, don't, I ain't a big smoker because I like my stuff, you know. The Rasta in me like my thing natural, you know, natural vibes and thing. I don't trust people, you know what I mean? They're going to put stuff in it because, you know, this is capitalism up here. You got to keep the customers coming. So who, who is to say that these people are, you know, random people and thing that you don't know you go pick it up from, don't trip a little something in it to keep you coming back, you know? But, hmm. Well, I, I knew about that in, uh, you know, in Amsterdam and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But that wouldn't be the reason why I would visit there. I want to visit there for the historical buildings, you know, just the waterways and stuff, you know. That's the kind of stuff I'm interested in. I'm not going, to, oh yeah, let me go over there, man, because they're going to smoke weed and we're going to party. And, you know, no, I want to go check out the place, check out the people and thing, you know. But let's keep going. And they have a policy of tolerance toward recreational soft drugs like marijuana. People 18 years or older are allowed up to 5 grams on them, otherwise it's a misdemeanor. They are world renowned for excelling in field hockey, speed skating, and volleyball teams. Sailing is of course one of their longest pastimes. They even have a huge festival once every 5 years called the Sailed Amsterdam Festival. For some reason, it's common for people to give birth in their own homes as opposed to a hospital. About one-third of all babies are born this way. Uh, what about those clogged things? Ah, yes. Well, in the past, they actually served a very useful purpose. They were worn by farmers, fishermen, and artisans in the past to protect their feet from nails, fish hooks, and other sharp objects. Today, they are mostly sold as souvenirs, and very few people actually wear them. I don't know. There's actually a guy that comes into the grocery store at work and he's got a brown clogs on all the time. And I remember him, and I'll tell you why I remember him, because sometimes I have to clean the bathroom there. And every morning, when I have all the water and stuff in there, uh, sprayed out on the floor and stuff, getting ready to, you know, clean it and thing, he'd walk in there with them clogs on and walk back out and make a big mess for me. That's the only person I've seen wearing one of those, but he, he was in there yesterday morning wearing it, in shorts. And the morning before, when it was like 20 degrees, he was in there with his clogs on and shorts. He really aggravated me clogging through the damn bathroom and making a mess for me. Today they are mostly sold as souvenirs and very few people actually 
actually wear them, but they're pretty cool. Oh, and hey, Anna, what's up with all those spinny windmill thingy mabobbers? Ah, uh, yes, the iconic symbol of the Netherlands. Well, many of these historic windmills were actually used to pump out excess water to reclaim the land they now use for farming, all before electricity. And as for music, the... Actually, I got this one. Barb said I could have my own segment in the show now instead of just being a one-liner guy! Yeah, that's right, uh, Keith has been upgraded, so yeah. Well, we'll enjoy it. Well, that just happened. Again, I guess everybody has superpowers now. Historically speaking, the Dutch contributed much to the Baroque period at the end of the Renaissance, with numerous composers, organ players, and vocalists rooted in Christianity. Traditional clog dancing was also This dude looked like he's been to Amsterdam quite a few times. Today, Maybe however, too many. There are many genres the Dutch enjoy. <laughs> Electronic music reigns supreme. Most of the best well-known DJs in the EDM scene across the world are from the Netherlands. And the Amsterdam dance event, ADE, is the world's top and largest electronic music conference. So if you come out here, get ready to get shocked with some musical electricity. Thank you, Keith. And speaking of the development of the Netherlands over time, let's talk about history in the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures, Iron Age with Celt and Germanic groups, Gallic Wars, the Romans come in, Frankish kingdoms, Charlemagne, blah blah blah. Friesland once had a Viking ruler, Lotharingia, Holy Roman Empire, confusing Burgundian and Spanish Habsburg and city states, the Spanish takeover, Dutch revolt, 80 years of war against Spain, this dude is a hero, Golden Age and stock market, Dutch East India Company, exploring years, Dutch Empire, Napoleon drama, Belgium breaks away, Luxembourg breaks away, World War One, relatively neutral, World War Two, attacked by Germans, not neutral, decolonialism after the war, mining golden age, founding co-members of the European coal and steel community, which would later become the EU, government encourages over half a million people to move out, Euro adopted, and here we are today. Some notable people I wonder why. Hey, comment down below. Tell people me people why they encourage people to move out. King. Michael de Reuter, possibly the most famous painters, Vincent van Gogh and Rembrandt, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, Willem Verens, Abel Tasman, Anne Frank, Max Verstappen, Glennis Grace, Dick Bruna, these soccer players, these skaters, and of course the royal family, and of course there's so many others I could have mentioned, of course I butchered all the pronunciations, but we're really running out of time and we gotta finish this marathon, so without further ado, let's see who the Netherlands hangs out with. <laughs> Now, there's a reason why it's called going Dutch when paying for a meal. The Netherlands likes to share. Systematic and mathematically equivalent to what is owed to each based on the merit they've earned. First of all, pretty much all the former colonies have some kind of amicable relation to the Netherlands. The Afrikaans language in South Africa is basically just an Africanized version of Dutch. Tons of Surinamese and Indonesians have been migrating to the Netherlands for decades. Otherwise, the USA and Canada are very close friends as well. During World War II, the royal family actually took refuge in Canada, and Canada actually quickly changed the law in which the hospital was temporarily considered extra territorial so that the princess could be born Dutch. To this day, the Netherlands sends tons of flowers every year in gratitude. For the U.S., the two go way back all the way to New Amsterdam before it was New York. The Dutch have immigrated to the U.S. for centuries. Five American presidents have been of Dutch descent. They are each other's third largest direct George investors. W. Bush is Dutch descent? NATO since 1949. And overall, in most global affairs, the two usually work together as close allies. With Germany, it's like a funny love-hate relationship. Like, the two share so much historically, both being under the same influence like the Western Roman Empire, the Franks, and even their first king, William of Orange, belonged to a German royal house. Then again, World War II was kind of like a jerk move, and the Dutch never really forgot about it. But nonetheless, they've moved on, and today things are fine. Germany is their largest trading partner, both in imports and exports. Many Germans and Dutch cross over and visit, study, live, and have families with each other's countries. When it comes to their best friend, however, almost every single Dutch person I have talked to has said their little brother they love picking fun on and calling stupid Belgium, or at least specifically the Northern Flanders region of Belgium. Belgium where the Dutch speakers are. And many see the Flanders region as just an extension of the Dutch realm. The royal families love each other. King William Alexander even bestowed the Knight Grand Cross to King Philip and his wife. Flemish and Dutch people have been intermarrying and cooperating side by side since the beginning. And even after Belgium's independence, they've still clung on as the only two Dutch official speaking nations in Europe. And even then, Belgium is only half Dutch speaking, so they really can't afford to separatize. In conclusion, the lowest nation in Europe with the tallest people on earth and with centuries of discovery, invention, innovation, and tradition, it's no wonder why the Dutch say they keep their heads above water. Stay tuned, New Zealand is coming up next. So once again, Vincent, thank you so much for being in this episode. Our favorite Dutchman, you have made your country proud. Dutch boys! All right. <clears throat> totally enjoyed that, totally enjoyed that. Uh, man, I keep bucket listing. I'm going to have to get cracking real soon, you know what I mean, and thing, but I just like all that old stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, 
there's so much history there. I mean, like, my island is small, so the history is not as great as theirs. And there's not a whole lot of conservation of old bi buildings and stuff like that. Especially when you're in a third world country and you're trying to jump ahead and catch up with the first world countries. And I put quotation on third world and first world. But anyway, man, thank you all for watching this with me. I'll leave a link in the description. Go check out Geography Now and see what they have going on, okay? In the mean and between time, y'all, hope you're preparing up for that Christmas. I love Christmas, and I know a lot of you like Christmas, all the celebrations and the family and all that kind of stuff. So, take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.